Hey, kitty girls, it's Sunday, February 4th, 2024, and welcome to Cubs Out Loud Drag Race Tea Time, episode number three of season 16 for our series, where we are covering episodes four and five, which is already our live and girl groups. Welcome to the show. For those of you that don't know, or hello again, my name's Gary with my ever fabulous co host. Hello, everyone, it's Damon. Welcome. And we're going to get into these two latest episodes and have some chit chat about how we felt this current season has gone um, of late. Let me tell you, uh, if you were in our Telegram chat group, you knew when I watched the fourth episode because I had my moment. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> it, well, it is your moment. Habit. <laughs> I was really, I was really in my feelings just watching it as like a viewer, like, and I was, I was bothered <laughs> by how that played out. Let's just, let me just go and look at that again. Oh no! <laughs> just to like refresh my memory, because I feel like there was some. I'm pretty sure it's a paragraph, and it's very pointed. <laughs> yes. Well, it's technically it was two messages, just so you know. Okay. Um, for for our listening audience and viewing audience, there were there was there was a lot of all cap words. <laughs> yes. There were, there were there were a lot of all cap words. We'll put it like that. I won't I won't spoil the fun for Gary to to, to share that to you when they when we get. If if and when we get to it, I mean. Yeah, then. I mean, I, I mean, I've cooled off since then. I will say that. Um, I just. But, well, are, is it is is it in, in is it going to be in any of your little things here, or do we or do you want to just take a moment and and um, unload? I'll, I'll get to it, it at some point. I'm sure. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's not. It's not something I plan to talk about. It was just one of those like immediacy. Like I need to get this off my chest in the moment. We'll we'll, we'll see. Um, Ooh, I just looked at the end. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's that's gonna be fun. Well, that seems like we're both riding riding the same highway in the same direction to me. Um, yeah. <laughs> to a certain point, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, these particular episodes, uh, the first was focused on RDR Live, which is like the RuPaul's Drag Race Live, as in Saturday Night Live kind of concept. It's been done before. It'll probably be done again. Um, so that one was really about improv. The whole big pressure cooker was that it was one take. Which it wasn't. To video. Which it wasn't. Well. I don't, I don't care what they say. I don't care. How, I don't care. Ooh. I'm already heating and we haven't even gotten to it at the first point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care how many times they say it. Drag Race will never do anything live, live. I don't care. Um, yeah, one yeah. take, all that stuff. I, I highly doubt that. Yeah. They've got too many cameras, too many, too many things to happen to make this thing. Right. Yeah. But anyway, that being said. Yeah, the, so there was that, and then uh, one of the contestants sashayed away, and then we got to girl groups, um, which was intriguing because it was a, link, a lip sync to mm -hmm. a Rue song with right. your own lyrics and your own choreo as a group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like these past two episodes were not very original. And so I'm like, all right, we're only five episodes into the season. Am I going to get real bored by the time we get to the finale? Because it seems so, like there's nothing fresh about what you're trying to do. As so. A show. Yeah, like what? OK. They are in a ways regurgitating things that they've done in all stars like in the in the regular show mm. like the rdr live was done in um all stars and it was literally done last year which give it, give it a moment to bloom um and then this girl group one i believe was done in all stars seven the all winners one 
um, where they had the girl, where they had the them do girl group. I think. Or there was another one. I know there's it's something. It's similar ish to something things that have been done before. Them go get going into girl groups. I mean that's that's as far back as like season one, if you want to get serious about it. But um, it's a sign. It's a sign when ideas are being regurgitated. I things are being redone over and over and over again. We know Snatch Game is one of these big ones that has always been done and, and yada, 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 yada. Um, but those are those are kind of staples where we've always seen, okay, they, they're they they're good, they're good-ish or whatever. Um, this is now becoming trite. Hmm. I don't know if that's the word I want to use. Well, I, I, yeah, and I don't even want to say it's predictable. It's just not exciting or stimulating. Yeah. And as much as this season has a lot of personality, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of the talent to go with some of these particular, like, challenges. I don't know which one to use. <laughs> <laughs> Girl. <laughs> <laughs> David's like, which, which, which fan, which fan? I mean, I'll give it, I'll give it a CD. I, a I think, CD. well, I think it's fact. I mean, I mean mm. for me, it's fact because it's like, look at what happened, you know? Mm. Like, I just don't think, I think some people serve good face. I think maybe some people serve good body. I think some people serve good, like, looks. And some but... people are just cunts. <laughs> And some people wear vaginas on their heads. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving right we'll along. Get to that. We'll get to that, I'm sure, at some point. Anyways, uh, yeah, it was. it's just been a mixed bag. But it is ironic to only have the have three queens go on five season, five episodes in. Yeah, because well, they did the, yeah. I mean, you have a double, you have a double premiere over two mm -hmm. episodes, two weeks. So that eats up time. And now mm -hmm. that we've gotten to know the girls, I think we're in that stage of like, okay, who's next? Next. <laughs> next. Because we want to get to like the top portion of the cast. You know, we have 11 left. In order to mm -hmm. have half, you have to get to seven. So it's like we got to get through another month, another four weeks of girls leaving for queens mm -hmm. to be gone before we feel like, you know, we're actually starting to get into like the competitive. The, the meat of the competition. As right, right, right. So that well, in case, you want to jump into yeah. the first segment? Let's do it. Okay. Racers, start your engines and may the best drag queen win. All right. So we're going to get into uh, pedal to the metal. This is the first section of our thoughts where we kind of put things in three categories over these couple of episodes. The first one is uh, serves, which are the positive things um, that we that stood out to us in particular that we liked in the episodes. Then we've got swerves. This is like shit that you should have avoided as like a hazard on the road in this particular race. And then the last one is nerve. And nerve could be good or bad. Like it could be like, like that takes some fucking nerve to pull that off. Or it could be like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, <laughs> no, ma'am, not, <laughs> not on this day. Um, so I'll be curious to see. Uh, I have a funny feeling we're kind of in a certain alignment, but we'll we'll see where that is. You you kind of notice I have a little bit of a theme with some of my thoughts. <laughs> yes, uh -oh. I see. I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. But starting with um, serves, David, who are you give it? Who are you give it a serve to? So I am going to actually give serves to one of the fun original idea. Well, I won't say original because I doubt it's original um, ideas um, for RDR Life, which was the Barbara Shop Quartet. Okay. Um, I thought it was fun. I loved that they um, played it, played into the, um, you know, Barbara S kind of thing. I love that while it was called the Barbara Shop Quartet, they were, it was three queens and they had a story already lined up for why there's not a fourth queen. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was cute. Um, um, props to Safira and um plasma on their singing chops although plasma definitely sounded like barbara a bit more than the rest um 
And you know, props to 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 um, Nymphia for trying. Um, it was funny. It was cute. The fact that she doesn't sing or is not the best singer, I will say that it. But it worked in the way that it made it kind of funny. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what added to it. That kind of humor brought that helped bring some of the humor to it. Yeah. Um, um, and again, big, 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 big props to um, Plasma for her portrayal for doing this and either giving us a really good story or for putting your feelings aside to do something spectacular. Yeah, you bring up an excellent point that I feel it does fall into one of those two camps. Either Mm -hmm. she knew what she was doing the whole time in terms of like production and television for a story or what she said was a hundred percent authentic real and it wasn't about production and story and she was seriously concerned about like getting yeah. kind of stuck in an a- in a rut of an avenue right being this classic kind of like call back to a certain era character queen mm-hmm. who you know um sort of feels typecasted in a way yeah uh and the reason I feel about the the first one is because, as we've seen, in like not too long after the episode aired, we have a video of Plasma singing "Don't Rain on My Parade," hustling and bustling around New York City. Like that's my. That's why I hate. I don't like. I feel like you did a really good job playing it off for TV. Um, because are whatever, like, you know, again, and if you want to like, again, truly off the to Barbara kind of thing, I get it. Like you really are a fan. And, and, and I feel that way. They kind of, the, <laughs> the, if the confessional was anything and them like skipping and like time skipping, as you were talking about Barbara was any indication you are a Barbara fan. You are a Barbara, you know, appreciate, appreciate you know, appreciado of, of her and right. all this stuff. So again, it kind of, like I said, it falls in those two camps, whether either you were doing this really well and playing us and good kudos to you. I'll give you your flowers for that. Or you were, I am a very true hardcore like Barbara fan and I didn't want to let her down and all that stuff. And you put that aside to do this and bring everything out. I have a, I have another thing to throw on the theory plate, so to speak. Okay. So here's my serving, my portion. What if she was planning to do Barbara for a snatch game? And by doing Barbara in the skit, now she's kind mm. of already played that card. Mm. If it were me, I could see where that would make it difficult to do that later yeah. in snatch game because you've kind of already introduced this character before. Right. So I don't know. I don't know. I just thought of that as you were talking, and I was like, hmm. Because if you haven't, for those of you that are listening or watching, if you haven't seen Plasma's music video, you really should. Because of all the queens that I've ever seen do a music video while their season's airing, and it's based on a moment that happens, like, the only connection is technically that she played Barbara in the Barbershop Quartet. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Like, it's not yeah. the same character, technically. She was just basically doing an homage to uh, Funny Lady, mm-hmm. right? Funny Girl. Funny Girl. And, like, you know, the what I love more than anything was the current modern dayness, the take that mm-hmm. she did about how, like, like, in the beginning, all of the people that are talking to her, which this happens actually in the musical, like, that are trying to – that that prompt the song – 
don't worry, not mm-hmm. my grade, were all drag queens, and they were local yeah. queens, and they like, and it, and it, you could tell it was rehearsed, like they mm-hmm. knew what they were doing. It wasn't like a last minute. I thought of this. Wouldn't it be fun? Like, yeah. you know, and the other queens are like, wah, wah, you know, just kind of like going through the motions. <laughs> I really was super proud of them. I was like, wow, yeah. like y'all are really committed to this, like yes. the timing and the essence of it. But then I was like, would I expect anything less of Plasma? Um, you know, Miss Miss BFA theater queen, you know, so. Yes. Yeah, like, I mean, and it was so funny because then like she gets out of the cab or whatever. And of course, it's yellow as an Uber or Lyft. And she gets out and then she's like, where the hell am I? And then you end up seeing the ferry boat, and of course she's going to be on the boat. Like, I mean, it's just one of these things where I was like, wow, talk about a wink and a nod through the entire thing. Yeah. So Someone go ahead. someone shared a video. Um, I'll have to see if I can find it again. Um, they they do kind of side by side from the movie. Oh, really? A girl. comparative? Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have to see if I can find it again. I won't do it right now. Actually, I will do it right now. So That's how I am. to your to your point about like the specificity of that, and if it really is kind of a recreation shot by shot in some ways, then that kind of leans into your whole theory about like you know was she producing in mm-hmm. the moment? Um, and I don't know. I mean, it, it's quite possible when they got the script handed out and stuff, and they looked at it immediately. Plasma saw that and was like, "I want it," and she might have talked to Amanda and Dawn and them and been like. I want I want you guys to take it and fight me on it or something, mm. you know, and and Dawn is from New York and I'm pretty sure knows Plasma. So right. I feel like there's absolutely some stuff that could be happening off camera. Um, You know, I don't know. Like, my understanding is they do get writing utensils and like notebooks or whatever to like right. spread the workroom so I could see them like passing each other notes. And if they're not allowed to talk because they're on ice, um, yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I found that interesting. So, yeah, that's a, it's an intriguing perspective about um, Plasma really doing it for the production storyline. I mean, because it worked. Yeah. And uh, I don't think this is a spoiler alert to anybody. She won. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it she didn't get the Jan rosé edit <laughs> of being the new york musical theater queen that doesn't get the win right so yeah yay anyways moving along what about you um i said q q q um man q really has been knocking it out of the park on an aesthetic look like thing Mm -hmm. and just knows how to pull it together and well mostly um (laughs) and and you know and like but what i realized is you need to have the time to make that possible Mm -hmm. because in this last episode we kind of saw what happens Mm -hmm. um so you know i really i really want to give props because i have some concerns that uh they may not make it to the end Mm. despite how good they are with their look and their aesthetic and their, like what they're bringing to the stage. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, she, Q has been, it's been very interesting watching her, um, this season. Um, I'm loving her, her runways. I'm loving her looks. I'm loving what she brings. I'm loving her dedication to the craft and drag and everything that seems to be prevalent in her portrayal. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing a lot of, of potential for failure. Mm. Um, and that's kind of where I'm at with her. And maybe that's why I'm intrigued. Um, she's, as I think we talked about this in the past, like she obviously seems to be making everything herself. She's doing a lot of stuff on her own. She's the way it sounds or has sounded in her like confessionals and stuff is that she's relied on herself a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and that can get you really far in a show like this where you are kind of isolated in a sense. Um, but to counter that, there doesn't seem to be a lot beyond. Um, she's indicated that she's, you know, comedy and, and does some has, has that kind of campy side to her, which great. Um, 
but we saw where she her some of her fail fail failure failties um in this yeah. most most recent episode yeah I, I, the thing that kind of intrigues me is i was surprised when we were watching the most recent episode and they were showing the rehearsals everyone was focusing on like her body movement Mm -hmm. Like I'm talking about her being robotic. And what I did find interesting is I'm like, if you're such an attentive queen to detail, how have you not practiced or crafted feminine, like body, right. like, uh, like movement gesture. Like that was the part that really kind of surprised me a little bit is that several of the competitors have that part down. Mm -hmm. so like you know to to do a hand gesture to like you know sweep away hair or point or like there's there's i guess the word is grace mm -hmm. like like there's a way to like kind of move fluidly through mm -hmm. space and it's was surprising to me that that wasn't coming across but then another part of me thought well maybe q is so focused on trying to get the choreo down that they're like, I'm not going to worry about that until later. Like, that's kind right. of like icing on the cake. Like, I need to know the moves. I need to know the steps. Like, I need to know the one, two, three, and, you know, and, like, figure out where my body needs to be, and then I'll add that. But I didn't really quite see the addition in mm. the performance. But it also right. wasn't as bad as the choreo looked. Yeah. I don't... So I don't know. Again, I don't... Like I, I will say this, I didn't, I didn't hate her outfit. I thought it was a basic like. I'm going to be like the, with everyone else. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna do like it looked like everyone was kind of being like sequiny and 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 like blinky in a sense with like their looks. I didn't hate the look, and apparently she made that you know the the blue that, outfit for the number yeah the, the purple number, yeah. outfit yeah. It, if if that was the case, then you know, she obviously maybe didn't have the time because she probably didn't have the normal amount of time she would have to make something um, extravagant. And that's again where I'm feeling that might be one of the failures or frailties of her is mm -hmm. she's blowing it, knocking it out of the park with like looks that when she doesn't, it's just it's harsh. It's harsher because she's looked so amazing. Right. So, the way the judges have seen this moment, I don't, I don't agree with it in this situation. But like the idea of being like, oh, you do all this great, magnificent, mar marvelous looking stuff, and then we see this, and we're kind of like, what? And yeah. And I was just like, no, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. It was fine. It was fine for what the challenge was, which was a girl group kind of thing. Right. Yeah, but whatever. Okay. All right, so let's get into swerves. Oh, how intriguing. Damon, will you have a swerve? Oh, okay. Yeah, this. Um, okay. Hey, everybody. I put down Dark Lady Mirage. Um, and I'm just going to I'm just gonna call it out there. I'm going to say this in a nice way. Um, as a queen from Vegas as a gay person in Vegas or a gay person period, I was genuinely shocked that you did not know this song. Oh, this is not what I thought you were, where you were oh, going with this. No, 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 no. Got, yeah. That's where it. I'm going. Got that's it. where got I'm it. going got with it. it. I want to know where you're going with it. Uh, like, to <laughs> me, it was very much a, not a slap. It just felt wrong that you didn't know this song mm. and Jim and I watched it and we were like, Oh, she doesn't know the words. And I'm like, Oh no. And it was, and it was obvious. It was painfully obvious. Well, what doesn't help is that they put into the edit when it's done, Michelle saying to Rue sort of under her breath, not one single word. Yeah. Not a single word. And not I was like, word. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Right. I was like, I was like, oh, girl, you going home. Mm -hmm. Like, 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 like it's... if there was if there was a, a trap door button, they would have hit it already. 
guess. I will put it like this. It felt like, um, and I'm going back, back, back several seasons. I believe, uh, oh, it was Dax and, um, um, oh, her name just left my head. The double el- el- elimination when they did um, uh, Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive. Mm. like they were expecting wow amazing because it's a well-known drag staple right what have you song and they got such so lackluster performance and flailing and what have you that um it was enough for them to send them both home it was it was it was it was yeah it felt like that it felt like Mm. um the double elimination of Mahogany and Vivian Panay was stronger. I think that was the song that they had, whatever it was. It just, this is a song that everyone knows and everyone, every queer person I believe has some familiarity with. Um, And her not knowing it was a little rough for me. Um, And unfortunately, it is also not a, big, big, big performing song to where you could have performed your way out of it. Because we know you have the tricks and stuff. You can do stuff. I, I, I can see that. But it's not... It didn't have that for you. Well, there are some the- interesting theories that were posed online about how she could have saved not knowing the words. Mm-hmm. If there is such a thing. And the biggest thing is, I think a lot of people were disappointed that she didn't effectively use the heel clacks in the song to go yeah. with the claps yes that people do or and i didn't know this was a thing because i've never seen this apparently in some bars when this song is played people slam their drinks on the bar top right when the claps happen um i didn't know that was a thing so i thought that very it's very interesting that you know it was brought up in several different areas of the internet that they were like the least you could have done was like slammed your heels like yeah. you know while you're writhing around on the floor in in the perfect rhythm to show that you understood the song mm-hmm. even if you don't have words down um willem on race chaser really said something interesting it was like there are no rules you could have written the lyrics out on your arms she's like there are no rules you just have to lip sync She's like, I used to do it when I was younger. She's like, I would not know the, the words to certain things or couldn't remember a certain stanza or whatever lyric line. And she's like, I'd write it out. And, and what I found intriguing about that is I was like, obviously, you're not like this, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> staring at your arm. But like, and I was like, Dark lady laughing, <laughs> dancing, <laughs> the candles one by one. Clap, clap. <laughs> I found that I found that interesting as a comment from Willem. She was like, "There's no rules. You can't write your lyrics out." And I was like, "Hmm, hmm." Well, it it always become comes down to, and I will say this: like, when do they know the song that they're going to be doing lip sync? Like, well, and this lip-sync. is the scuttlebutt because everyone is saying you get an iPod the moment you land. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And they give you basically a book with all all the lyrics and all the songs, and they give you more than what is going to come that season. Right. And supposedly they tell you in advance as as each episode comes up to record what the two song, what the song or the two songs are going to be for the lip sync. Right. So you, so you don't have to like know all 24 or whatever it is. You just have to zero in. mm -hmm. And uh, if, if what I've seen again on the internets, um, apparently, uh, Mirage was at Mirage's. Mirage was at the um, Roscoe Dream party, and I think she mentioned that she knew all of the songs on the iPad, iPod, except that one. Hmm. Like she got them all down, and she just didn't get that one down. Which you know, if that's the truth, then <clears throat> like it's rough, but. Well, right, and then I think her legacy going forward is that now she has to perform it everywhere and show that she can do it. I mean, that's the same thing with with Penny here in in, in Cincinnati and um, Party in the USA. Like, 
when she didn't know the words to that song on her season, which was season five, um, almost, not every time, but since then, it has become a staple for her to like perform that song every once in a while, just to kind of confirm, especially when it was like after, after the show aired. Right. Um, and it's kind of, it, it is comical. And I would love to, um, I would love to see a performance of Mirage doing Dark Lady and knowing all the words. I would love to see that. Yeah. But for now, she gets the sweater. Yeah. <laughs> so, I Gary. read your, I read your words and I thought you were still talking about plasma. Oh, because you said Dark Lady Mirage, and I took it as like her Dark Lady runway look, and that her oh. her illusion as Mirage, like oh, not Mirage the Queen. Mm. Because no. <laughs> I know, but I was like, I was like, oh, how interesting! You and I are kind of doing the same thing. We're praising them in one part, and then we're not praising them <laughs> in the next. So, because mine <laughs> is, um, my swerve is Q8 got the moves. She, I kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but baby, you don't, you don't, you don't know how to move really. It's, but you're also not horrible at it because, uh, in the last episode, she ended up lip syncing, mm-hmm. and she can gyrate her hips. Yeah, like I was like, and she can, you know, kind of move around. She's just not a dancer. Maybe it's a. Again, I, I, I think, kind of what you said earlier. I feel like Q gets in her head mm. and is like, I need to get the choreogra- cho- choreography down. Yeah. Like this is a choreographed number because it's multiple people. We're all kind of doing the same thing. It's going to look weird when I don't look the same as everyone else. So I have to get that down. Whereas in this, you can do what she wants because it's kind of a, you know, it's lipsing for your life. So <sighs> I, that might be something I don't know, but that's kind of maybe where my head goes. I don't. Do I think Q can dance? Yes. Mm. I just think there are people that can follow choreography, and then there are people that will go with how the you know the rhythm or music takes you. Right. And I think she's one of the latter. That's fair. The girl. I know. I love the I, I, I the the robots and all I, I like the comments. I think they were being a little salty the queens were about it, but it, it oh, in the in Nymph- the yeah. Nymphia was being just downright like evil. We'll and I was her. like there was a part of me that was like, All right, girl, knock it off. You'll get to her. Like You'll get to her. I would have probably said that to her if I was one of the other queens. When she just like was pissing herself because she just thought she was so funny, and it's not that what she was saying wasn't funny, but to me, I'm like, you are crossing the line now. Like mm-hmm. she's literally up there trying, mm-hmm. like, and now you're kind of being a mean girl and you're bullying, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So it was a little much. Yeah, and actually, it was a lot much. Let me rephrase. Yeah, there's a there's a like you said, there's a line between between being shady and being a cunt and you were there yeah all right so let's talk about nerve <laughs> i'm i'm intrigued by your selection so mine actually comes from untucked i don't i know we don't usually throw a lot from untucked on here but i loved tsunami's clap back when um uh q was talking about the like so in this in the most recent episode the queens although we're very early on got the, mm-hmm. the infamous like who should go home and why question from RuPaul and several of the queens said Q several of the queens said Amanda um, Q said Amanda and Tsunami and she said did I write it down not making a big statement in the competition. And Tsunami was not having it. Her mother came out, 
her Candy Muse mother kind of came out, and I was like, oh, I'm living for this. I'm living for this moment. Because she was like, but it's true. Like, it's true. You didn't have to say more than one name. You chose to say more than one name. And you, even in Untucked, the way that Q was explaining herself was not, was not, was not, was not good. Was not tea. It was, it was, it was, because Not making a big statement in this competition is a very shitty thing to say about someone that is in a competition with you. Mm. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> I no, I mean, I, I, you can feel that way. I'm like, I, I, I kind of, <laughs> and, and I guess the problem for me is I kind of agree with you. The I only mean, the no. only thing where I could see like she doesn't get good footing on that statement is actually in last week's episode, she really kind of made a statement with her share look. Right. Although I didn't mention it yet. Uh, I guess I'll say it now. I did not swoon over her look. I was very pissed with the internet and where everybody was like, oh my God, it's amazing. It's a replica, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, it's not. Bitch is wearing a corset. Cher was nude. Not the same thing. Not the same thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I loved her look. I loved her Cher look. I think it was amazing. Um, it did. It looked. It looked good. It looked amazing. It was good. Um, as I said last week, and I'll say it again. This I don't think I said it on the show, but I said it to Jim probably. <laughs> That's the look. That look saved her. Mm. I'm just gonna own it. That look saved Tsunami. Um. And but again, with this particular this comment and her kind of clapping back, I give the kudos and snaps to her because that was a maybe it was just a moment of your 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 mom coming out, your mother coming out, um, or maybe it was genuine and you were feeling in the feelings uh, about it all. But it was one of the times where I'm seeing in this season, and maybe that's why I'm so invested, is that. Um, these queens have kind of gone back in a ways they're not giving any fucks. Like sometimes the queens Correct. like self produce themselves and hold back on things because, oh, we want to be, because we know like if we say something or do something, like the, the fan base is going to come after us and blah, 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 blah. I am seeing that that is not always the case here. Well, uh, right. I, I think that this cast has a lot of personality and feels emboldened uh -huh. to make statements. Right. So, of course, when you've got plain Jane running her mouth all the time, it doesn't take much. We'll get there. I'm gonna get there. <laughs> I don't want the I don't want the end of the show to go long, but I have a feeling it's going. <laughs> what about you? Um, I want to give nerve for Safira being mother she really is because they even talked about it i think in this episode mm -hmm. uh they mm -hmm. made a reference to her being mama bear mm -hmm. and i love how she is minding her business and by that i mean she is being observant but she is not stepping in it no until she feels she needs to say something and then I love how she was politely giving some thought to Plain Jane about her behavior and how she should consider an alternative and how that just blew up and did not work. And I was like, well, you tried, girl. You tried. Like, <laughs> and I got to give snaps for like for trying and and putting that you know to trying to present that and you know it, it not working it not being palatable or whatever um and so i i, I really and you know yes. i really do like safira i am definitively spoiler alert looking forward to the edit being misleading for next week's episode Mm -hmm. about Safira. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see what how that really plays out because you know that was probably just production fucking around. But yeah, like I really, I you know, she, 
she really, you know, is is being mothered to them. And, 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 and I have to give a shout out for her share uh, runway. Oh, look. yes. That. The moment she turned the corner and I was like, bitch, where the hell did you pack them feathers? Like, <laughs> like where did you put them like quail blue long ass feathers in your stuff? So, like, if she's lucky, that neck piece over the shoulders rolls up, like, you know, kind of in a cone shape or something. And, like, so you can put that into something. I don't know. Like, I was really, I was really intrigued. But, yeah, she, um, she, she really has been delivering and, and, like, knowing herself and uh-huh. her, her aesthetic and that kind of stuff. So, um, yes, yes, yes. Mm. Mm-hmm. You ready to move on to the next section? Yes. Okay. I'm getting... Right, so now we are going to get to uh, snaps and eye rolls, aka the hits and the misses, what we refer to as the highs and the lows of these particular episodes, the things um, that we really want to give extra attention to. So, Damon, who are we giving snaps to? Uh, um, I'm just going to give some snaps to this runway. This, oh, okay. Um, everything, every, everything, every share, all at once. I, I love the, the title. Although she called it Night of a Thousand Shares in the uh, workroom, mm-hmm. they didn't change it to everything, everything which still it, it is what it is. This was a really good runway. And I'm, I am I think Trixie said it in the pit stop. I'm honestly surprised that it, we're doing this now. It's It's been so long. This is This was a perfect runway opportunity for any season, really. Oh, but they're, Share, not, they're not done with it. Oh, I'm sure. There'll be more than one. Right. It'll be in 17, probably 18, <laughs> maybe 19, because they've done Madonna more than once. I mm-hmm, mean, like, mm-hmm. it's just a guarantee that, you know, and especially yeah. because Cher has been such a look queen mm-hmm. as a performer for decades. Right. There's, there's so much lot... to easily be able to pull from. Yeah. And that's what I think was the best part of it. I think with the exception of a couple, um, Don. there were some. Hmm? Don. Yes, Don was one of them. Um, there were Sorry, I just have to call it out. I was like, uh, you tried. This is, yeah. It wasn't a good execution. I, okay. <laughs> Don, I love you. But step away from the Muppet fur. Mm. Step away from the Muppet fur. Please, for the love of all just just put it down walk away make something out of something else like like whatever like it well just... okay so i'm gonna call it out right here mark mm-hmm. my words what happened in this latest episode what did michelle say to her she elf wants ears. to see no elf ears she wants to see her try something else mm-hmm. and the moment she said that i was like oh here we go uh-huh how many more episodes uh. she got one <laughs> and then she goes home like if the curse has been cast then dawn will do a look without ears without the like attachments and all that kind of stuff she might try a bit of a beauty look and that's the episode she goes home i'm just saying just saying we've got a design challenge i think coming up in this next episode just saying um that being said um there were a few others like maya to me that i felt was, was just... oh Girl. so maya's I, I will I will own this to to the day I die. I think Maya was try, gonna was trying to go for the if I could turn back time look and they were like nope you can't do it someone, someone else, else is doing it. it yeah mm-hmm. and she was like well fuck what am I gonna do well I guess I'll just wear I'll just do this random ass photo from burlesque like of the hundreds of looks, right. Right. Out there for share, 
I'm going to do her press tour picture where she's literally wearing the most basic of, of, of things that Sarah has ever worn. Right, 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 right. Like, Sarah's look in that picture is they caught her, like, coming out of her house after, like, <laughs> after COVID. Like, that's what that look felt like to uh. me. <laughs> like, Sarah was like, I'm, I'm just going outside yeah, yeah. to, like, get the mail. Like, that's what that look felt like to me. And they're all the looks. Anyway. I know. And, it was problematic. Yeah. It was just so bad. The, the, and again, for her, once again, the thing that saved her was her, her shitty Sarah impression that made Rue laugh. That was the only thing that saved her. The th- the worst part of it all is that they left in the edit when Rue says to her, that meme is going to haunt you for the rest of your life. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, now it's a thing. Like, you've made it a thing, girl. Like, you didn't have to say that to her, but you nope. did. <laughs> you sure did. But again, snaps for this runway choice. I know it's probably going to be around for a while, but um, yeah. it's one of the ones I think would be worth it because you have the potential. There's a lot of potential there. Yeah. Um, I also want to make this statement for the record. Uh, everybody was living, losing themselves over plain Jane share runway look. I didn't think it was that great. I thought it was good. But what was pissing me off was everybody is like, oh, my God, what a, what a great replica of this Bob McAbee. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. And I don't know who it was. Was it Bussy? Somebody clocked it and said the feathers are too high. Like, because Cher was wearing a nude illusion. <laughs> I see your fact, fan. I was so irritated when they did the side by side. I was like, that's not the same dress. I was like, does it look like it? Uh, it's an homage. Kind of. I mean, to me, that's kind of like, um, I asked for Kool-Aid and you give me Weilers. <laughs> you know? That's a throwback <laughs> shit. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, they still make both, I believe. Um, huh? I said, I think they still make both. Like, it just, it just irritated know. the shit out of me. It's like, you ask for one thing and you get the other. And I was like, huh? I was like, that's not, you know... And that's what was irritating me about that whole runway is, like, the whole authenticity replica talk. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, wait, make up my mind. Which is it? You want it to be a replica or you want it to look like? Because Mm -hmm. Plasma's dark lady dress was not a replica of what Cher wore. No. So. So so Plasma's dark lady look was, I need a dress that looks like something. Right. Okay, this works. Boom. Worse like, yet, let me make sure that I attach a, a a dress with a drape that I can, you know, attach to my hand kind of thing. Like so I give the I give the essence or whatever. I give the la croix of it. I mean, you know. <laughs> Sorry. The La Croix. Um the yeah, exactly. Go. Like, it was just, it was that kind of a thing. And then we're nitpicking about how Mirage's hair is wrong for the dress because it's the wrong decade. And I was like, and I know there's a big scuttlebutt about that. And I was like, you know what? Rue gets to say it because what is RuPaul's fucking show? And Rue is a huge <laughs> share fanatic. So you kind of fucked up, girl. Like, like, I'm going to, I'm going to give you the recognition that you, that you, you done stepped in it. That you put the wrong hair on. But at the same time, I didn't think it was that clashing of a disaster. No. But then when she's like, it isn't even the same hair. And like the band comes across the front of the head and not over the top and blah, blah, blah. Like all these nuances, people started nitpicking. And I was like, mm-hmm. really? 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 This is, this is really? the path that we're going. But you're not doing this to every single fucking queen that comes down the no. way. No. We didn't do it to to to, to Megami with the fact that she didn't have a... um um. The, the thong on the back. Right, right, right. Yeah, the, with you the, know, the rose tattoo. Our, we didn't do it to morphine. Rose. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Come on, girl. Like, like if oh, we're, we're not, we're, if we're not going to do that to um, Zunami because she wasn't nude. Yeah. Because like nudity's gonna, been if, done before. So if we're, if we're going to nitpick and we're going to be like, it has to be oh, yo, back to it, then we we, we we should do it to all of them. I know. But it was a good runway. Anyway, that being said. No, I know. I know that it was. I just I just realized how challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, Cher is and I want to say this for the record as well like uh, so Nymphia came out 
and she had the wings. And I was irritated because mm-hmm. I was like, that picture ain't got no wings. Uh-huh. And then later somebody posted video. Bussy. Yeah, was it Bussy who posted mm-hmm. the video from the actual music video? Yeah. And showed the wings. And that yeah. irritated me even more because that means that Nymphia's was more authentic, but for some reason production didn't include like the photo to match mm-hmm. to it. And I was mm-hmm. like, what's that about? Anyways, anyways. Mm-hmm. So that. Gary, how about you? Um, so I'm gonna give snaps to two things. Uh, <laughs> speaking of Nymphia, Nymphia the instigator. Mm. That little fucking like, <laughs> she is such a twat. Like she like, you know, kind of goes around and like pokes on this and pokes on that and says these things, and I'm just like, really, girl. And then she got caught. This last episode. Yes. I'm like, I love how Saphir is like, oh, I see what game you're playing. Right. Miss, I don't play all my cards. I don't reveal everything. And apparently after the fact, it got revealed that she was a member of a K-pop group. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, no. I was like, well, girl, you're in trouble now. Like, like you really kind of stepped in it because you basically showed all the other girls that you've been holding back Mm -hmm. and not being real with them and that you're playing the game. So Saphira has got her eye on you and I don't think she's the only one that paid attention. And so now I'm I'm very curious to see how her future holds out for her. Cause I was like, your, your cutesy little run around routine and everything's a banana and you're goofy and you're weird. Like that's only going to get you so far. Cause they'll be like, you're a problem. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So anyways, I want to give snaps to Nymphia for being an instigator because she's this minxy little like troublesome troll in the like a, room. It's like a little like a little nymph. Ha ha ha. Uh, ha. Um, and then anyway. I also I also want to give snaps for Amanda's clapbacks. <laughs> Amanda, 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 a mandatory meeting has no time for the chicanery and the bullshit. And I love the confessional inner splice where Dawn's mm-hmm. like, get her girl. Like, yeah, <laughs> like you yeah. Know, she's like, put her in her place. Like, I just thought it was so great, especially in this last episode mm-hmm. when Q is attempting to mend a bridge with plain Jane mm-hmm. and plain Jane starts talking to her. And then mm-hmm. she just done put amanda's name out there uh-huh. and i love how amanda was like why you gotta be such a cunt and i was yes. like oh oh i was like damn damn <laughs> that was the thing i wrote down and i starred one of the things that happened actually in, in the rdr um live episode um is from the like very beginning of it when um it's from the it's from from, from Amanda's confessional, mm-hmm. and she said, and I quote, "She honestly can eat my my fucking ass." Like, she was talking about playing. Yeah. And I was sitting here like, "Yes, Mama." Like, like she she she, she, she Amanda did not gave no fucks right with with playing yeah. like absolutely no fucks. Deservedly like, so. Mm-hmm. They they are the most interesting dynamic duo on this season right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah. So so that was that was my one of my snaps. Let's move on to eye rolls. Damon, who you give an eye rolls to. <laughs> so we were we were talking about her I earlier. Know. I don't know. We're gonna talk about her again. Let's talk about James, shall we? And I'm going to, I've been calling her plain because I'm going to be at least somewhat respectful. But in this moment, I'm going to say Jane. Uh, 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 um, uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay. Never mind. I, fi- I heard yeah, what you said. Yeah. I was trying to figure out what you were saying. Yeah, got yeah. It, got it, got it, got it. So she, she likes to be called plain. No, she likes to be called Jane. No. Plain likes to be called plain. In the workroom, I swear she said she wanted to be called Jane because no, that is the whole controversy no, about her it's the game. Opposite. 
it's, it's, it's the opposite. She likes to be called plain. Because that's what it was mentioned in um, uh, Pit Stop. Because uh, Maddie was like, why does she want to... She, she's, she's, a, she's calling herself an adjective. Right. When, when like, she's just, like, any queen. And Trixie kind of commented about it. Like, like she's, she's Jane. Like, right. Like, you would want to be called... Any queen that has a name like that would want to be, be called Jane. But whatever. Right, right, right. I guess it's her way of trying to be different and unique. Um, and I don't know if I would call P-L-A-N-E an adjective. Anyways, well, whatever. It's it, it's it's. No, I know. I'm just I'm just pointing out the oddity that that Maddie was like, well, it's an adjective, and I was like, actually, it's a noun. <laughs> well, it's 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 her. Yeah, that's the reason I know it is because, um, uh, Amanda and her had that had that that back and forth in the workroom right before Rue came in, um, the first morning, and was like, um. Actually, it's plain, and and Amanda went, yes, it is, like as in like plain P L A I N. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know. I feel like she's flip flopped, anyways. It, it don't, it don't matter. She's a cunt anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a line I've talked about this before between like shade and being an ass or being a cunt or being, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Plain has constantly, consistently crossed that line. Mm-hmm. This last episode was a perfect example of that. Q was talking to you about y'all's bullshit. Mm-hmm. And you said something to the lines of, I have more respect for you than I have for Amanda, something along those lines. What the fuck was that about? And I am so glad, like you said, I am so glad that Amanda called her out on it. Loudly, proudly, in the workroom, in that moment. Mm -hmm. I was living for it because, to me, that was the, 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 like, there was no reason for it whatsoever. Plain plain had no reason to bring that uh, into this conversation. And as Amanda mentioned, you had no reason to bring her into that conversation. Mm-hmm. But she did. And dear, like, I'm talking about, like, no, you did this to yourself by saying that line. And then you have the audacity. Come to my notes because I'm so pissed. Um, nope, wrong page. Oh, what was it? I don't, oh, yeah, the the shady thing, the shade in the in the in the, the just her her confessional comment, the yes. one that I quoted, yeah, the telegram where I said, "quote living out living out my shady bitch fantasy," end quote, right? And that I wrote, part. and that is the reveal of the season. Yes, I was like, "Say that. no more, girl, because you've done said it all." And the reason I <laughs> said that in that chat was because I was like. Now that everyone gets to see that, they know that you are doing this intentionally. Yes. And you don't get to back away from that now. No. And that's my problem. That's my overall problem. Mm -hmm. You're calling yourself shady. You are not being shady. Mm -hmm. Shade comes from a place of truth. You don't like Amanda. Right. For whatever reason. You either think she's not on your level, or you don't think she's polished, which we now learn. And this is, I did watch um, a bunch of packing for Amanda. I haven't, mm-hmm. I don't watch it that often, but it, it came up and I was like, I feel like watching this one because I do kind of, I do like Amanda. I think um, she, to me, has the spunk and the, and the, sh- the sparkle of a rising star and right. really could like do some improvements and come back at an all stars and, and, right. and make, right. make a thing. So we've learned in uh, in um, what you packing. She's only been doing this two years, right? Two years. That says something to me. It it gives a it gives me a benchmark on where she was before she came on the show, mm-hmm. and then it gives me like okay, now it sort of makes sense where things weren't quite polished where there was too much going on, there was too much thought, 
and not enough of that polish that a queen who has been around for a while would have. So I get it. Amanda wasn't, I think Amanda was the source of your attacks because of the queens that were there. She was the one to you that was like, you knew that she wasn't going to be there long. Mm. You had a feeling she wasn't going to be there long. But that doesn't mean you have to be the shark. No. Sniffing the blood in the water thing. You don't have to. Like, there was no reason for you, Jane, plain Jane, to be so cunty to Amanda. You had no reason for it other than to do this shit. Yeah. You're not being honest. You're not expressing your opinion. You're not saying things for the sake of... You are saying things for the sake of television. Mm, yeah. You are making yourself out to be this villain. You have made it known that that's what you want to be. You live in this shady queen era, era, whatever you think that fucking is, which is not what you're doing. You are being a bully. Yeah. You are being a bully. You have you were saying things without recourse because you don't think you will get the recourse, and you are relying very heavily on the fact that you are pretty. You are a pretty boy and a pretty girl. Which ain't that pretty? I I know, but whatever. Like, but that's what she's going for. Yeah. Um, I want your fake Jimbo ass to be gone soon. Mm-hmm. And I have a feeling with Amanda out of the way and no longer you having that source of potential villainy, you will be gone soon because you are no longer fun on the show. Production has nothing more for you. Mm. I want you to think about that as you go into your Shady Queen era. So unless you start, unless you find another queen. I was just going to say. Yep. Unless but you I don't, find but another I don't know queen. who else she thinks she's going to be able to pick on. Well, um, there, 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 there's, a, there's a couple that she could potentially pick on. Right, but most uh, of the other ones have mouths, or mm-hmm. I see the other sisters coming together and like being right. like, what the fuck are you doing? Mm-hmm. But it'll also show us, if you find another queen to like set your eyes on or target on, that this is the whole point of what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You're not doing this to to. You are not doing this for the sake of improving a queen. You're not doing this to make them. Right. You know, you are doing this because you are a cunt. I know I've said that word several times, but I feel that that is who you are. Right. With that being said, Carrie. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's you know, we're pretty much on the same page. I wrote Plain Jane, quote-unquote, innocence. Um, and it comes from that, like, that thing that happened in Confessional mm-hmm. when she was like, just let me live my shady bitch fantasy. And I was like, oh! And there it is. You got one word right. Um, <laughs> See, that shade. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, and, and that's the thing is, I, you know, I, I wanted to applaud Crystal, you know, uh, Safira there for trying to explain to her, like, what you say and how you say it has an impact. Mm-hmm. And Jane sort of, like, gave in and said that, like, she doesn't necessarily think before she speaks. Mm-hmm. And then realizes after the fact. I mean, there was a there was a comment about this. Was it on Race Chaser? They were talking about how at the beginning of episode four, was it? Um, notably, Jane came into the room and she had been crying from mm-hmm. the end of the previous episode. And, like, that was never explained and never talked about. And so the now what makes me laugh is Alaska's like, there's this whole conspiracy that Jane actually has a heart and she's a human and she has emotions, but we're not allowed to see that because production's just like making her look like a like a you know a horrible person. It was so funny to me. I was like, well, I girl. mean, <laughs> I was like, I she's, just, she's doing herself no favors. So. Yeah, it, yeah, absolutely. I think for me, it had like. 
is that something? Because I do, if I'd have to go back to the episode when Mirage was eliminated, kind of look through that and kind of, because I do think I saw her actually crying. But everyone was crying. Right. Um, so let's oh. talk about that. Because I, I pretty much I affirm everything you said about about Plain. Jane. Plain. Um, so I I will talk about what happened that I posted into the Telegram group because so uh, I was just really upset with how that ended. Mm-hmm. So we're going back to episode four. We get to the lip sync. We get to Dark Lady, and it's Geneva and Mirage. Mm-hmm. And Geneva has everything to lose because yep. she has already been in the bottom. She can kind of see the writing on the wall. Mm-hmm. There is some been online discussion about the fact that everyone in production, like there's been theories that everyone in production thought that Mirage was going to automatically win. And they weren't ready for how it actually played out. Mm. And so if there was manipulating behind the scenes and there was a quote unquote selection process and the plan was to eliminate Geneva, that backfired on production because of what happened with Mirage. And then the next week, Geneva was part of the girl group that won. Mm-hmm. So um, if you had seen the episode, Mirage, so if you watch it in real time order, quote unquote, in Untucked, Mirage says to Dawn and I think to one or two other queens, I don't know the words. Uh-huh. And I'm very concerned. And uh-huh. what I appreciate was that these queens were like, it's okay, girl. Like, just do your thing. Your personality is important. Like, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I can't remember who it was I heard. Someone was like, wrong. <laughs> like, leave the bitch alone. She don't know the words. Let her learn the words. I think it must have been in the in the um, race chaser episode because I think that's what Willem and Alaska were arguing about was like when the girl says she don't know the words, get the fuck out of her way, like leave her alone, you know, just be like, hey girl, good luck, and just walk away, like don't be yep. like trying to talk to her and build her up, yeah. like give her the moment yeah. so she can learn. So, anyways, just, just... Jane, ahead. yeah, Jane goes out there and she performs and pretty Mirage, quickly. You mean... Sorry, Mirage, I'm so irritated with that. I got a one track mind. <laughs> Um, anyways, so Mirage goes out there and she goes to perform and while she can move and she's got little tricks and stuff, you kind of realize she don't know the words. And the moment you kind of realize she don't know the words, I was like, oh no, she's going to go home. Like, there's no way to get out of that. There's no way to Mm -hmm. not know Mm -hmm. the words. Mm -hmm. And is it absolutely possible to know the words? Of course it is. Like we've seen it before. Yeah. So, but what really set me off was Geneva wins. That's right. Not what, that's not what set me off. Geneva wins. She goes back. And, you know, Rue lets Mirage know that she has to sashay away. Mm-hmm. But this is the beginning of her journey, you know, and that she, you know, is destined for greater things. And it hits Mirage. And it hits Hard. Hard. And according to the other girls on the cast, this whole moment went went a long time. And because of the edit, we don't see the apparently 10, 15 minutes Mm. of this breakdown. And the reason I knew it was such a significant thing is because production included camera shots of all the other contestants and all of them were crying right even plain like every single one of them was was crying and upset because mirage was having a breakdown so i got on telegram because i was so pissed off about this thing (laughs) and i said all right having just watched the latest episode i'm gonna vent here for uh before the next coldr not one of them bitches helped them in their moment of need it is a sad state of affairs to watch someone have a mental health struggle and simply watch it happen. Fuck all of them. I don't care about being scared of mother. I don't care about fucking production. When you see someone in crisis, you meet them where they are. 
You All guide caps. them to the next moment. That was total bullshit. Shame on World of Wonder. I'm so fucking irritated on how that played out. Bad enough they rigged the damn bottom two. And that's my tea, Christine. Ugh. Ugh. I was so livid. Mm -hmm. As a person who works in public health and has had to go through mental health first aid training right. to spot when people are in crisis and to help them, I mm -hmm. was like, I cannot believe that nobody did anything. Nobody. Not a single person. And I was mad at all the queens because I'm like, surely amongst all of them, there's one or two or three that know mm -hmm. she needs help. And production? Yeah. Like, nobody does anything? Yeah. I'm like that's ridiculous. And that's the part that's the part that I just I hope again I hope that we didn't see. I don't know, I, but I I I don't I don't I I'm 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 hoping that's the case. I don't think it's the case cuz knowing knowing how this shit goes down like they probably couldn't or they were told whatever. Like I don't want to say they were told. Like just, I know, but um, it was so weird to me that not a single one of them left the back of the stage and mm -hmm. walked up there to hug her, to mm -hmm. hold her hand, and mm -hmm. be like, "Breathe, mm -hmm. come on, just breathe with me." Like, yeah. how can you not rise in that moment to meet her and say? You'll be get baby. You're going to be OK. Like yeah. you will be all right. Like she just needed someone to like be there for her and nobody did anything. And I was like, this is insanity. And have queens become emotional before? Yes. And have they, you know, had a hard time? Yes. But this yeah. like we're in season 16, motherfuckers. Like you can't tell me a decade and a half into this that nobody there has the skills or the aptitude or the whatever to do it. I get it. When you see something unexpected and it could be traumatic for you to watch it happen that you freeze, but seriously, like that room is not empty. All of production shows up to watch the lip sync. Mm -hmm. So there's camera crews, rigging, sound, the judges panel, Raven's there because she fucking painted Rue. I mean, it's like we've got hair, makeup. You've got so many people there. And like, no, nobody, nobody, nobody. Yeah. I was like, I don't a, know. It was insane to me. I just could not believe we watched that happen. And what's worse is then they did nothing about it in terms of like speaking to the audience and saying, if you are having a hard time with things, call the Trevor Project. Call, yeah. like, yeah. you know, um, yeah the suicide hotline not that that was exactly mm -hmm. what she was feeling like that would have been a bit but extreme, no but but like yeah but i know what you mean like given given some kind of like psa of something along this lines um and the queens having the somber moment in the workroom afterwards um in the next episode mm-hmm that was enough for me to sort of, I won't say absolve them, but be like, okay, they're still, they're letting this, you know, really sink in and they're really kind of feeling it. Um, I like, I, I do genuinely worry that production or somebody was like, no, I feel like I get what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I feel like production stopped it. I also hope right. that like production, someone like crisis manager or someone on, on the staff mm -hmm. of the production, like took her, maybe took her off stage, something along those lines to give her her moment off stage. Like there's a big part of me that hopes that, and we don't see it because production doesn't want us to see it because they don't, again, they don't want us to see the reality of the reality show. <laughs> and <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and, um, 
again, like I'm hoping that that was the case that they gave her some time because they said it went for 10, 15. If, if queens are kind of indicating like 10, 15 minutes of long things, if that was the case and nothing was done, then I feel the way you feel. Like yeah. that's bullshit. Like that's awful to be standing there. The Mirage standing there for 10, 15 minutes trying to gain, compo- recompose herself so that they can end the fucking show. Like, no, like, we're not, I'm not having that. I know, we know she had a moment off stage when she left because we saw that and we saw that in Untucked that she, like, like, I need like a minute and she says that to someone on staff and then she goes off into a room or somewhere and she cries. Like, we see that happen if I'm remembering the episode correctly. Right. But the fact that there was in that exact moment, there wasn't anyone and it may if it was because of production then yeah that's that's pretty awful um if it wasn't because of production it's kind of even worse where like no one wanted to do anything everyone was kind of frozen because they were scared or what have you um that becomes an even bigger issue i hope that we learn more about it i would love to this is something I hope gets brought up in reunion so that we can find out, find something more. Like, I hope that it gets brought up. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to say this since I was so impassioned about it, because I think it needs to be said. So there's a website that people can visit. It's called NAMI. It's N-A-M-I. It stands for National Alliance on Mental Illness. So NAMI.org. Um, it's who I did my training through for work and you don't have to be affiliated in a work position like I do with public health to like go to this. Anybody can go there. It's for family, friends, caregivers, teens, adults. They do lots of different stuff um, in areas to help individuals with resources. They do different kind of trainings um, and there's lots of like local chapters, national chapters. Um, it's actually international and you know, knowing that there's ways to get support to help people with mental health. Um, I know that, you know, while in the name it talks about mental illness, the reality is that we all face challenges. Uh-huh. And we will all in our lifetime have moments that are traumatic and we think are overwhelming emotionally and theoretically break us. And that was the thing about what was happening in that moment. My understanding is that Mirage, like many, you know, contestants, when they leave, they feel that their life is ending because they had this dream and they thought they were going to, like, go either to the end or pretty far. And this isn't playing out how they wanted. And so the reality, like, is kind of shattering the fantasy of their imagination. And it happens for all of us. Like, we, you know, we expect to be, you know, employed with a company for X number of years and we find ourselves without a job or, you know, <laughs> you know, um, we expect to be happily married for X amount of years. And then we, you know, things don't work out and you get divorced. I mean, right. you know, there's all sorts of circumstances yeah. that can change for you. And it just and the thing is, I wasn't expecting a therapy session. I don't want I don't want anyone yeah, yeah, yeah. watching yeah, to yeah. think that, like, I was expecting us to watch like a whole thing happen. Right. It just really pissed me off that like nothing appeared to be done. I was like, really? Like no one is doing anything for her to just like, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, and and I think what kind of bothered me the most about the cast. And I realize I'm going to say this and it seems like I'm blaming them and I'm, I'm kind of, I'm not blaming them, but I am saying it just really surprised me because it's been done before. Where when a queen goes to leave, the cast rallies around mm-hmm. the leaving contestant. And it's like, we're here for you, girl. We love you. Like, all this kind of stuff. And that kind of didn't happen in this instance. And I don't understand why it didn't happen. Like, it was just so messy and weird to me. And so it's not a surprise that she just walks off the stage. Yeah. Because she's still going through yeah. it in that yeah. moment and i and i think that's part of it um again there's a again if it was as 
the queens didn't do anything because they didn't want to, keeping it as simple as possible. Then her kind of like storming off stage, well, it's not storming, but like just going off stage is makes more sense because mm-hmm. she didn't get that support. She didn't get that, that feeling. She didn't get that um, um, hug or what have you. And by that point, she didn't want it because no one had done it before. So like, like right. if, like, again, like if she had gone off state, like if she had, if someone had come to her, like you said, met her where she was, uh, if that had been the case, then great. Um, and then she just, you know, had her moment and then she still was still in her feelings, but it had a moment to where she could calm down enough to where they could end the show, kind of what it felt like. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she walked off because she still was in her feelings. That's that's her prerogative, as it were. Right. But the other narrative is that the other one, which is where no one did anything. Right. And and the, the part that bothered me, I guess, so much that triggered me was if all of the girls are crying, mm-hmm. watching this happen, it means they're aware. They're in the room. They're feeling it. Mm-hmm. So why are they doing anything about it? Mm-hmm. And the, and I get that some of them may feel that they don't have the capacity, the skills, the knowledge, the whatever to like help. That's totally fine. Like you right. know, when I was in college, I remember we would talk about like we would do fire drills, um, and you know, people because it's college and people are drunk and stupid, they would like pull the fire alarm at like three in the morning and like, <sighs> stuff like that. And so you have to like empty out of the building and, and all this kind of crap. But I remember having discussions like these debriefs afterwards sometimes. And one of the things that got said was about how some people will freeze in a in an emergency or in a chaos moment and not know what to do. And it's like they become overwhelmed. They don't know that they should leave, like they should get out of the building, right. you know, that they should, you know, not use the elevator, that they whatever, because, you know, they're just not able to process in that moment, like the best steps to take for the reality of the situation, whatever that is. And it's not because they're drunk or, you know, uh, yeah. chemically yeah, yeah. altered. It's just that they kind of shut down a little bit. Yeah. Um, and basically I think it's the fact that, you know, your emotions overwhelm your logical state and you kind of can't decide what you're going to do. So I say all of that to, to just be surprised that nobody yeah, kind of like came forward or like, you know, broke yeah. off or whatever and was like, and, and I guess what bothers me about it is this show talks so much about how, like, we're sisters. We're a part of this season. We create, you know, our chosen family kind of thing. And I was like, where was that? None of that was on display. So that's, the, I guess, the part that really fired me up in that moment. Watching yeah. it. I was like, what is this? This is absolute bananas. Yeah. Um, and we're not talking about Nymphia. I know. As soon as I said it, I was like, God damn it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think that, you know, folks just should consider that stuff. Um, and I don't know. I mean, maybe things did change with production and, you know, they have a way to handle that going forward or there was stuff that we didn't see. Yeah. I don't know. But again, like it was just like kind of like a lost opportunity on them. Yeah. And I think that's the stuff. issue. If we, we don't necessarily know. We only can go on what we've seen, what was presented to us. Right. And that's, and, and that's, that's, the, that's, yeah. that's the problem I think as I have is like, y'all could have, you know. Could have handled it better. Right. So anyways, that being said, anything else before we wrap? No. All right. So there are plenty of ways for you to give us your feedback on our thoughts and feelings. And you can do that. Do by... you, do you think plain Jane is a cunt? <laughs> If you're on YouTube, comment below uh, or, you know, give us some feedback. There's several ways to do that. You can go to CubsOutloud.com, our website, and leave a comment there. You can send us an email at CubsOutloud at gmail.com. You can leave us a voicemail message, uh, 361-COL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. Uh, you can pretty much find us anywhere online, most of the main social media outlets, as Cubs Out Loud all together as one word. If you want to join uh, the Telegram platform and see me have, like, breakdowns of my own and, like, make, you know, all sorts of, like, defamatory 
blasphemous comments. Not really, but you never know. Um, you can go to tiny Just speak URL. <laughs> speak your truth, girl. You can go to tinyurl.com uh, slash telegram hyphen C O L D R if you want to see when we're going to be recording our main show live, uh, broadcasting to YouTube. You can watch us over uh, there by looking at our calendar, which is tinyurl.com slash calendar uh, dash C O L. Uh, for those of you that are um, kind of watching but not watching we have switched to sunday mornings east coast here in the u.s oh boy so that's the thing um that recently happened in the calendar will help you keep up to date on that <laughs> if you want to um support us you can go to zazzle.com slash cubs out loud and get all sorts of different things there um you can get t-shirts like uh damon and i happen to be wearing which are supportive of the show damon's uh nice blue shirt is the cubs out loud drag race logo as well as the coffee mug that they have um i happen to be having the consent is my four play series shirt this one happens to be in the drag pride colors um and scheme plus there's other items on there as well you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash cubs out loud uh, for a dollar or more a month you kind of help keep the lights on as we like to say around here pay for the uh, back end of the production stuff or you could just leave us a donation. Give us a one-time yeah. tip. Go to paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud to do that. And then, of course, anywhere that you get your podcast, you can help promote us and uh, give us good feedback ratings. We'd greatly appreciate it. Damon, where would people find you if they wanted to get in touch with you? Okay, you're on. Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I've been hitting it back and forth. If you want to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub 79 That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter or pup umber 79 on um, Blue Sky. Both of those are not safe for work. For the safe for work stuff, you want DMA Gamer 79 which is on Twitter and TikTok. You can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73 um, on, I still call it Twitter, uh, on that website. I do have GearBear73 DRAG because I've tried to sequester all the drag stuff over there so I don't get things spoiled. Um, but some of you uh, horny motherfuckers over on Twitter are also into drag race and you're posting some <laughs> shit. And it's kind of annoying me because <laughs> I'm there to look at the fun, naughty stuff, not see your hot takes. Mm. Anyways, I mean, you want to see some hot takes, but not those hot takes. Mm. Hot cakes is more like it. Anyways, mm -hmm. so with that, uh, we're gonna wrap up. We'll be back in a couple of weeks after the next couple episodes. So we want to thank you for watching and or listening, and we'll talk with you later. Bye. Bye.